Um, well, uh, thank you all for coming here. I know you have several options. Um, and I, I can see that we are a short number, but let me tell you that this is really common. We usually uh, hold talks uh, about SAP security and ERP security in many security conferences. And as this is so, so focused, we are usually a short number. But thank you for being here. Um, first of all, let me clarify that this is a very technical talk. So we are going to see some attacks, uh, highly technical attacks, uh, uh, executing command, creating users, accessing and bypassing authentication on Siebel and GD Edwards. But well, let, let's, let's start with the presentation. So first of all, uh, disclaimer, uh, this is uh, for all the talks that we hold. And this is the agenda. Um, we are going to have a small introduction on ERPs and also about the company and ourselves. We are also going to see uh, a little introduction on Siebel. And then we are going to jump to the attacks to Siebel systems. Uh, Jordan is going to, to explain several attacks uh, that are quite interesting. Then we are going to jump to GD Edwards. And I'm going to be talking about the different attacks, uh, the network protocol that is being used by JD Edwards. And then we are going to draw some conclusions uh, on why, on how should we take care of the security of ERP systems, because we are seeing some, some really uh, coincidences with other ERP systems that we are also us usually talking about. So who is Anapsis? Um, uh, you heard the introduction. I'm the CTO at Anapsis. Uh, Jordan is a senior ERP security researcher. We are focused on ERP systems. We, are, um, we, we have several customers, uh, SAP customers, Oracle customers, big companies usually that are uh, processing their business functions with this uh, big ERP software like SAP, like Oracle Business Suite, JD Edwards, PeopleSoft, uh, and Siebel as well. Um, our customers, as I told you, are big companies uh, because you usually don't see ERP software in, in medium or small companies other than very specific uh, versions, um, and also uh, governmental entities. And we, have a, we are usually engaged in consulting services. We provide software to secure these, these um, applications and also hot trainings, uh, that's what we usually do. Um, we are uh, also engaged uh, in talks and hot trainings in different uh, security conferences like Black Hat, RSA, DeepSec, Hacking the Box, uh, all over the world. And we are going to talk about two specific products. Why did we choose these uh, two? Because uh, we have been uh, doing some research on these products. We are also doing research on other Oracle products, uh, usually doing research on SAP as well. As we are very focused, we, are, we take care of the technical layer, like the services that are being provided by this ERP software, like JD Edwards, um, and Siebel, and SAP as well. And we usually find misconfigurations uh, and attacks due to vulnerabilities that usually allow you to go from the IP address or from having nothing than the, than the network connection all the way to the information stored in the, in the ERP system. So we are talking about ERP systems. We are talking about systems that are processing the most critical information in the companies. And in this sense, we, we like to think about ERP systems also as mission critical systems because uh, if, if that kind of systems are uh, let, let's say shut down for one hour, one minute, or uh, a specific amount of uh, an amount of time. Sorry, then the company can lose a lot of money, and that's because all the processes are being executed in this uh, in this application. So, in this sense, we usually try to move from the technical side and from the denial of service, command execution misconfiguration, all the way to, to the meaning of these kind of attacks. Because we, we're going to see several highly technical attacks, but we, we need to understand that if someone manages to break into the ERP system, into the JD Edwards or Siebel or any other ERP system, then he can actually get the information 
of our customers, our um, um, employees, formulas. We have seen uh, several customers which also hold the the very the very the most uh, sensitive information, like formulas and, and all the how how the the products are being built, which are the the components and everything, also in these systems. So that's why it is it is a very very critical. Also sabotage. If uh, you can imagine, we are going to see some some sabotage attacks as well, and you can imagine what will happen if if someone uh, just shuts down the the ERP system. And also depending on the the creativity of the attacker, as we are saying that these these uh, systems are holding. Uh, really critical information, then the attacker would be able, for example, to create an employee or several employees, uh, pay a salary to those employees, just uh, send uh, raw material or the finished product to his own warehouse, uh, create a bank account and make payments to his own uh, customer. So there are a lot of uh, technical attacks that can be executed and this would lead to this kind of attacks that uh, are more ha more high level and, and we need to to understand how to translate this so now i'm gonna forward to jordan that's going to to talk about civil okay let's talk about civil what civil is well uh that was the question that i made myself a few years ago and someone told me a crm so my next question was what is a crm system so a CRM is a customer relationship management. Uh, what does it mean? It means that each one of the interactions of a client within a company will be stored in a CRM system, in this case, civil. It doesn't matter if the client in question just asked for a price of a product or just wanted to hear about the technical specs of a product or if the client purchased a product. Each one of those interactions will be store in the civil system. Civil system was um, original development by civil systems, sorry. And this company was purchased by Oracle in September of 2005 by 5.8 million dollars, billion dollars. So we say that civil is one of the most critical uh, systems that will be on the company's infrastructure. Why? Because of the data that is holding. And who has this kind of systems? Well, civil is used by larger organizations because it's very popular and it's one of the most mature products that is in the market. So what we can find on the civil? We can find credit card numbers that this is more related with purchases that can be made from the clients. Billing information, the name of the client, uh, the billing address of the client, the level of income, all this data is cataloged on the civil systems. Family tree, I mean, uh, then uh, who is the mother of the client, the father of the client, even if the company can figure it out, your relatives or your neighbors, it will be stored as well on the civil system. And your habits as a consumer, I mean, you tend to spend more money on Christmas, on holidays, uh, which brands you prefer. I mean, to all this information is very valuable from the data mining point of view. Um, that is why we say that it's really critical civil for a company, because all this information, and this information is not just valuable from the company that owns the civil, this information is valuable as well from the, an attacker point of view, and also for um, a potential competition company. So let's let's get more technical about civil. We know that the civil systems are online, right? But the attackers also know that fact. Um, also, most of the systems that you will be finding online, let's you register with just providing a name, a last name, an email, and that's it. You don't need more qualifications to get yourself a user. You don't need an extra approval. But in general, it's that way. And attackers know how to find this kind of systems on the internet. For example, they can use Shodan. Everyone knows Shodan. Okay. You, you can even try it right now if you have internet access. Uh, we just type civil on Shodan, 
you will see a lot of civil systems that are directly connected to the internet. Or you can use Google. You can use Google Docs as well. For example, on this picture, we are trying to find out the sales module, I mean the sales flavor of civil with the English language. It's just that simple. Let's talk a little bit about the anonymous user in civil. By default, um, it doesn't matter if you don't provide uh, anonymous access to your civil system. By default, you will have an anonymous user. That anonymous user will be used by civil, for example, to check some license-related issues. When you log into the login screen, when you try to access the login screen of the civil, you will be presented with the screen if not if if come on, if some issues if not will rise with the um, license the next question that you may be wonder we can delete that the anonymous user no you can delete that anonymous user in fact if you delete that user no one will be able to access the civil because civil cannot uh, check for the license for example um, how I assign that anonymous user. Well, at the installation time, you will be able to set that anonymous user. Uh, but let's see what's happened when some errors arise. I'm going to perform the demo here. I'm going to use. To explain a little bit uh, of what Jordan is going to do, we have um, some virtual machines, a civil um, server, also a JD Edwards server, and Jordan is going to connect to that server, and you will see the, the, the vulnerability that he's talking about. OK. This is the civil system. OK. I'm going to show you in the server. So I'm going to log in. OK. Let's connect to the civil system. This is the login screen of the civil system. So the first thing an attacker will try to do is, for example, try to guess a username and password. But as we can see, he d didn't have luck. So he might be suspecting that that particular civil system is badly configured. And he will try to access one of the pages that normally he will have to provide username and password. He only needs to click on Enter. And he will be presented with something like this, saying that they don't have, he don't have enough privileges. But he has enough privileges to accept what is called the sitemap. So the only thing he needs to do here is press Control shift a to access the sitemap. And as the anonymous user is configured with administration privileges, he can, for example, administer all the users. All the users. OK. So let's go back to the presentation. And let's see why this is happening. OK, by definition, the anonymous user must have low privileges on the civil system. But this is something that not always happens in real life. Uh, we often see in different Oracle forums that some developers were complaining, oh no, this configuration didn't work, or my login screen is not working anymore. And someone at some point said, OK, configure your anonymous user with a high level of privileges, and all your problems will be gone. You can save it back later. You can change it later. Well, in real life, that later never comes. And in general, that anonymous user will end up configuring with, so, uh, with very high privileges. Uh, as we could saw on the presentation, the attacker didn't need anything from the civil system to perform a complete bypass of the login screen. He just knew the IP address, and that's it. 
and as we saw, this lead in a full compromise of the civil system. Okay, how you can protect yourself? Well, it's very easy, fortunately. The only thing you need to do is find the configuration file of your silver flavor and change that anonymous user to s some other users with a low level of privileges. Let's talk a little bit more about the civil access control. By default, you have two different mechanisms that were in place on civil. The first one you have is at the view uh, layer, it's more of the user interface layer. From here, you will be able to restrict who can access the view. It's easy. And the second one is at the business component level. This is more a concept more related to civil. From th this uh, layer, you can restrict who is going to access that particular da data. All the civil components, uh, the business components, sorry, have fields. And all those fields are mapped to the row in the database. Why are those mechanisms in place? Well, they are here to prevent unauthorized access to data and to allow access to certain users that really need to access that data. But, so, uh, sorry, Jordan. To, to sum up what Jordan is saying, you have several layers of authorization in civil systems. You can apply different um, authorizations and, and you can allow users to access views and you have like a, a very complex authorization scheme, but Jordan is going to show you how that can be bypassed. There is something that is called the seeable query language. This is a built-in language on the civil system. It's an expression language that is lo located all, over, all around the civil. Um, from this language, you will be able to do some queries. For example, uh, you can sort an, an applet for all the products that has one responsible. S who can use this query language? Anyone. I mean, you only need to access the functionality. If you can access the functionality, it doesn't matter if you are authorized or not. If you had the button and you can click it, you can use civil query languages. And as I said before, it was originally created to filter data, for example, in the applets. And let's see what else we can do with civil query language. I'm going to show you a video in the interest of time, and later on, I'm going to comment why I was showing you a video. Here. You have already opened it, right? Here. So let's click on play. And more pro so. So let's try. We have some refresh problems with the screen. Okay, that's it. First, what the attacker tries to do here is the user try to figure out the username and password, but he doesn't know the password. So he will try to access the civil custom recovery system. If you are using LDAP as a data source for civil, you will have a built-in recovery system mechanism. If you are using a database, you will have to provide your own custom uh, password recovery system, and this is the case that we are showing. On this case, we are trying, or the attacker is trying to reset the password of a username. He will try with Sandmin, that is the civil administrator, is one of the full users that we, you will always find. But he needs to know the email. He doesn't have that email. He will use civil query language injection in order to brute force that email. Exploiting one of the civil query language issues is like exploding a SQL injection, a blind SQL injection. That's why I'm showing you a video, because brute forcing all the email could take a while. As we can see here, we, uh, the attacker has found out the uh, email that is sandmin at civil.com, and he also find out the secret answer. So the only thing he needs to do here is put the email, sandmin at civil.com, click on recover, and he will be prompted with the secret question. But he already knows the secret answer. So he can choose a new password here and click on change password. 
and that's it. The password will be receipted on the civil system. So the only thing the attacker needs to do is, again, trying to log in with Sadmin and the password he had already provided. And that's it. He will be able to access the civil system with the maximum privileges possible. Here, civil administrator. OK, let's go back to the presentation and see why it is happening. What we did here, or what the attacker did here, is bypass both uh, methods of aut authorization. He didn't need a username and password. I so mean, we have as, as I mentioned before, as long as you can access the functionality, that's it. You don't need to provide any kind of username and password. What data can be accessed? Everything. I mean, we chose to reveal just the um, secret um, answer and the email of the user. But anything that is in the database can be done, except calculated fields, but this is more technical. And as I was mentioned before, this is just like exploding a blind SQL injection. I mean, you will be brute forcing all the data that you want. How you can protect yourself? Well, you will have to use ESCript. ESCript is something, uh, a proprietary language of Civil. You will have to catch in your applets the pre-query and the invoke query um, methods and apply your custom filter mechanism. Yeah. Sure. So this, the solution for this are configuration. Uh, so as you can see in the countermeasures, you need to configure the anonymous user in a specific way and you need to apply some, some filters um, in, the, in, in, this, in these search fields. Um, but those are all configuration issues. It, it's a, a technique. It's like a exploiting a, an SQL injection. While this is more like a, a, a technique, it would be a, a, a civil query language injection like Modify, b being able to modify these um, these queries, you are able to get more information than that the user should have access to. So, uh, and by the end of the presentation, if you have further questions, um, we can also answer any question you have. Um, so, moving forward, what is JD Edwards? Okay, so I have some some data here explaining what JD Edwards is. Basically, it's an ERP. It's another ERP like uh, SAP, like Oracle Business Suite. This uh, ERP I is very successful in specific markets like um, uh, um, real estate market and other like n not so widely deployed like SAP systems, but it's very specific for, for some some markets. It started in 1978, so you can see that. Um, this, fr from the security point of view, this gives us some information because when you start looking at a product that was built on around 80s or 90s, then you can see that the mindset that the developers had at that time was very different than the mindset that developers sh need to have these days, like um, with, with all the, the initiatives for security in the development lifecycle, those kind of ideas were not in place in that time. So you can see several vulnerabilities that are affecting the uh, like design flow, okay? Because if someone can um, register some external server or connect without authentication or retrieve information unauthenticated, then those are flaws in the design on, on how the, the systems were, were built. Uh, and we are gonna talk about some vulnerabilities that we have discovered and Oracle has al already fixed. Uh, and to, to bear in mind is that even though this is uh, quite an old product, it is still um, used in several companies and Oracle is still supporting and will support this product uh, unlimited. How does uh, GD Edwards infrastructure look like? This is a technical, the, the next four slides are very technical for you to understand the, the attacks that we're gonna perform. 
Um, basically, that's a, you have a web server. In the case that you have a portal to connect to a GDWS, that's very common as well. Um, you have the, the Java application server, then the deployment server from which you, you do all the deployments and you transport all the, the, the information and the, the customizations. And then you have the enterprise server. And that's the one that we are going to be focusing on today because it's like the most critical server because it's the one that's processing all the business functions. So if you manage to compromise, you can always compromise uh, other server and go all the way to the enterprise server. But if you can directly compromise the enterprise server, it's, the, the, it's like game over, okay? That, because you have all the information there. And you can think also, when you're connecting to a JD Edwards, you can see, you can think in a layered stack. So going from the network to the client, going through the HTTP server, uh, and then all the way up to the database server where, where the information is. So um, the way that the different components are uh, being connected, uh, or the protocols that are being used are HTTP, ODBC, that are uh, known, well-known protocols. But something that we found out is that there is a specific protocol that is called GDE Net. This is a, a proprietary protocol of uh, JD Edwards, and it, it's used to connect to the enterprise server, and it's the one used, for example, from the portal or any other component that is interacting with the enterprise server that's done with, with this proprietary protocol. Then you have other abstractions like GDE base uh, to connect to the database. But the one that is most important for us, uh, at least from a security point of view, is the GDE net, because it's the one that uh, is exposed to, to the network and is the one that an attacker, for example, would be able to use in order to compromise the system. And that's uh, what we are going to be talking about, the enterprise server and also the GDE net um, protocol. So this is how an enterprise server looks like. Basically, you have a dispatcher, uh, one process that is receiving all the the queries, all, all the, the connections in the GDNet interface. And then you have kernels. These kernels are customizable by, uh, by the client. He can configure the number of kernels he wants. He can enable or disable kernels depending on the function of the enterprise server. You can have one, two, uh, the, the number of, of kernels that you want to enable. Um, what uh, we have been focusing uh, highly in the security kernel and the SOC kernel, this is a system administration work web kernel, because these are like uh, the, the most critical from the security point of view, these are the most critical kernels. But if you think about this, all the kernels are actually critical because uh, the rest of the kernels are either processing business information or connecting to the database or um, releasing batch processes. So all the, the different kernels in the JD Edwards infrastructure are critical. Um, as you can see, that's an extract of the gd.ini uh, uh, file. This is a configuration file that holds the definition for all the kernels. You can see that. Uh, the security kernel is the one in charge of authenticating the user, so it's high, highly critical. Uh, it's defined as one DLL, and then you have the, the dispatch function that's uh, also very technical. That's a function in charge of dispatching the messages that are going to that kernel. Um, and then you have other two different DLLs and, and functions defined. This is an example. And you can find information on, on how this uh, kernels or, or the messages that are being processed by each one of these kernels uh, in, in those files, depending on the kernel, is the ri range of messages going, for example, from 250 to, to 260. Those are the, the IDs of the messages that are pro processed by one kernel. And then you have other range for other kernels. So depending on the, on the specific kernel are, is a set of, of IDs of messages that are being processed. And then uh, we talked about infrastructure. I told you about the kernels. But we are also going to take a look at the network protocol. This is how um, GDNet packets look like. It's a protocol based on messages. So you create a message with an ID. Depending on the ID is the kernel that is going to process that message. 
And then you, you have within the packet, you have different uh, packets. Within the message, I'm sorry, you have different packets. You can add a file packet, a data packet, a Unicode packet, an integral array packet. So you can add different information in the same message. This, this message is going to be processed by one specific function, and you need to comply with the specific uh, interface. Like one function is going to receive two data packets, one file packet, two integer packets, depending on the on the um, function is the, the message that you are going to send. But this is um, this is how uh, an overview of how, how these um, packets look like. And then the default number is the 6015, that's a init port in TCP. But then if you take a look at the process, you will see that there's another port that is also open in the UDP um, size, in the UDP side, it's the 6015 UDP. And that's not processing this kind of messages, but control messages. So you can send control commands to that uh, port as well. So let's see a little bit about this. Um, initially, if you just install a JD Edwards uh, system, you will see that by default, you will find all these kind of users configured in the database and you are actually allowed to connect to the database with these users, and the password for these users is uh, the, the, the username. Okay, so you can connect GDE with password GDE or any of, of, those, of those users. So as, as you can see, by default, you have a lot of users. Um, and going to the database would mean access all the business information, not only the user passwords that are also stored in, in the database, but also you will be able to retrieve all the business information. So, so this is also very important to do, and this is like one of the most easy to, to solve, because uh, basically it means changing the password of the users. You need to go back to some configuration files if you have interfaces. Uh, accessing uh, and authenticating with these users, but uh, the basic idea is to change the passwords and do not configure weak passwords for the users, even though these users are used as proxy users, because the, there is another concept that is a proxy user that is a, a, a user in the database used by a user in the in the application level. So this one is easy as well to to fix. So as I told you. In the UDP 6.0.15, there is a port open that um, is uh, processing control commands, okay? And if you take a look at the different control commands that you can uh, send to a JD Edwards uh, server, you can see that some of, the, some of the commands are to retrieve information, some others are to get a list of, of uh, I don't know, the kernel processes. But there is another very interesting that is Shut down. Right? When I first saw that, it was like too, too obvious. What, what, what is going to happen if I, if I send that? So, let's see it. So, I'm connected here to my computer, and let's say that I have. I'm going to discover a GD Edwards server. So I'm running MMAP, specifically pointing to the 6015 port number, uh, TCP. And uh, uh, you're, you're going to see that the port is open, so this this is an indicator that this could be um, a JD Edwards server. So if it, it has the 6015 TCP, it's also possible to have the 6015 um, UDP. So let's say uh, let's send a command. I have um, a script here because it's coded in Java. I, I'm gonna show you um, the the code later, but you can do something like this.
And if we do the end map again, you will see that the results are going to be different, a little bit different. And basically, because the service actually uh, received the shutdown, and whoa, we have so little time. Okay, so the, the server is stopped. So uh, just summing up what's possible to, to be done, uh, you just create a UDP packet, send it to the t uh, UDP 6015, the server sh shuts down. How, how do you fix this? This is a vulnerability that was released, uh, uh, the, the fix was released by Oracle. Uh, so you need to apply the latest uh, critical patch update and you will be um, covered, you, you, you won't be successful, uh, susceptible to this vulnerability. Then there are other vulnerabilities also affecting the GD Edward systems, and we see these kind of vulnerabilities in our customers. Um, you can actually retrieve information by several ways, but there is one way that is particularly interesting because you can remotely retrieve the gd.ini configuration file. Okay, you, you can tell me, ah, that's a configuration file, but this file does not only has the, the kernel information, but also credentials to connect to the database. Now it looks better. In case you didn't believe me, I'm, I'm going to restart it <laughs> because I actually, uh, now it's starting. We need that. So um, you saw that there is a, okay, I'm not going to run the end map again. And you can do something like this. And this is creating a specific packet connecting to the TCP interface and what you see is the response of that uh, packet, and this is the gd.ini file. Let me find the specific section that I'm interested in show you. Not only the security information, like who is authenticating the user and the default username and password, but also the database credentials. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, well, somewhere. Well, these are all the kernel definitions. Okay, DB system settings, user, password, uh, database. So you can directly connect to the database and access all the business information. So that's another another attack. Uh, well, we we saw the demo. Um, the 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 meaning of this is that anyone would be able to retrieve information, connect back to the database, and um, not only access technical information, but business information as well. And also, there is a specific table that is called F98OWSIC, and that's the one that's holding the user passwords. So, so the users in the application level. Okay. And do you know which hashing mechanism is used by this application? Okay, none. Actually, the users are encrypted using uh, SOAR. With a with a specific password, um, uh, so so you can retrieve the the users and decrypt them. You don't ne even need to bother in doing a brute force attack or something like that. So you can remotely retrieve all the the username and passwords just having network connection to the system. Um, and again, this is another vulnerability that was already fixed. So apply the latest CPU. And we tend to think that this is. Uh, somehow the tip of the iceberg, we are usually uh, analyzing not only JD Edwards, Civil, but also SAP systems and other ERP systems as well. And we used to find these kind of vulnerabilities in most of the ERP systems. Uh, so in this sense, uh, we, we did several research projects. We came up with uh, um, over 20 vulnerabilities, most of them critical. Uh, so we reported to Oracle. Oracle Took some time to fix the vulnerabilities, but finally, um, I, I think the last one is going to be sent, published in uh, the fix is going to be published in the last CPU, so you will be able to to have the fix for it uh, also. 
And so I encourage you to um, access um, the, our webpage. You will see all the different uh, vulnerabilities that were fixed by Oracle.